Hi, this is Gerald Friedman, Professor of Economics, University of Massachusetts at Amherst. And we're here today to talk about the TARP, Obama, the stimulus. Did Obama and Ben Bernanke save the world? Um, the answer is probably yes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just to make a grand global statement about it. But yeah, yeah, the world economy was teetering right on the edge. Um, when the Federal Reserve and Ben Bernanke let Lehman Brothers fail, they were trying to send a message. They were sending the message that if you're a bank that behaved badly, that made bad investments, it's your problem. We're not going to bail you out. The other bankers and investors and the whole community on Wall Street and the city of London and all these people throughout the world, people who had lots of money, they looked around and they said, they let Lehman Brothers fail because it was a bad bank. Well, they're all bad banks. They all did it. They were all heavily invested in bad assets. In, they were way over-invested, heavily leveraged, Typical was Citigroup, which was leveraged at a rate of over 30 to 1. That is, the assets on the books were 30 times their capitalization. If those assets go down even a little bit in value, then it wipes out their capital very easily. Yeah, they were all heavily leveraged by this point. Deregulation had worked. The banks had gone crazy doing what banks like to do, which is to make lots of money. Um, and they made lots of money for a while by doing things that stopped working. They invested heavily in these mortgages. They went up in value as real estate had its bubble. When the bubble burst and things started coming down in pr value, their assets were going down in value fast, and virtually every major bank and great many minor banks in the United States and Europe, they were all insolvent. They had lost so much value that it was greater than their capitalization. And if the Federal Reserve and the U.S. Treasury were not going to bail them out, then these banks were going to fail. And if the banks were going to fail, what do you want to do? You want to get your money immediately. You want to go to the bank and pull out everything you have. And you don't want to lend the banks any money. And what's going to happen to the banks when everybody starts running to the banks to get their cash out and nobody will lend to, each, will lend to the bank? They can just look and see, we've got 12 hours, 24 hours, and then we're bankrupt. Then we have to close up because we can't meet the demands being made on us. And we can't borrow the money we need to meet those demands because everybody thinks we're going to fail. And if everybody thinks we're going to fail, then yes, we will fail. And that's what they said to Hank Paulson, Secretary of Treasury, the night that Lehman Brothers failed. The banks, the major banks in the United States, the major bankers got on the phone to Paulson, to Bernanke, they held a conference call, and they told him that if we don't have something by tomorrow morning, we're failing. And the entire world financial system is going to collapse. Because if the major banks in New York fail, then everybody who had money there can't get their money. Everybody who depended on those banks to lend them money can't get that money. And then all the other banks throughout the world will start to fail because they can't get the money they need. They can't get the liquidity they need, the cash on hand. Everybody throughout Paris, New York, Frankfurt, London, everybody will be running to the bank to get their money. They won't be able to get it, and the world financial system will collapse, and then the world economy will freeze up. Because all the businesses throughout the, West, throughout the capitalist world depend on banks and bank credit to meet payroll, to pay for the supplies they need, and they would not be able to do it. So on Monday, Lehman Brothers fails. On, by Wednesday, Citigroup, Bank America, they fail. By Friday, companies aren't making payroll. By Monday, companies have run out of supplies and intermediate goods. 
um, by the next week, it's over. Everybody's unemployed. <laughs> um, for some of us, that may be a good thing. The end of capitalism. For Henry Paulson and Ben Bernanke, that's not what they wanted to have happen. So pa Paulson sat down and he did something truly amazing. Um, the chutzpah of it is awe-inspiring. He wrote on a yellow legal pad a law that involved $700 billion of spending by the U.S. government. $700 billion? That's more than the Pentagon. I mean, that's like 5% of the gross domestic product of the United States in 2008. Um, and he called this, this the Toxic Asset Relief Program, which immediately was called TARP. Um, written on a yellow legal pad, you know, faxed it to the congressional leadership and said, you need to pass this by tomorrow uh, so that we can go ahead and buy the bad mortgages off the banks so that the banks will have the cash they need, they'll have gotten rid of the bad assets, and we're going to buy these at the list price. We're going to buy them at what the banks say they are worth which was maybe 10 times what they could get by selling them. I mean, 10 times what they were worth at this point. The chutzpah of it, you know, and everybody was supposed to do it or else the world was going to end. Well, the world was about to end. Um, it, the story goes on. This is, this is amazing. So people like me were like, okay, Congress is going to pass this because the alternative is even worse. And it's a terrible law. It's a terrible way to do it. If we're going to give the banks all this money, we should own the banks. And we should fire all the bosses and all the top executives. And we should make them give back the bonuses and the salaries that they got for doing all the stuff that generated profits at the, ultimately at the expense of the bank's solidity. Um, solvency, uh, but I figured Congress was going to pass the law. Amazingly, they didn't. The House of Representatives voted it down. You could look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It had dropped like 200 points earlier that day because people were getting nervous that the con Congress might vote down the top. Within minutes that Congress voted down the top, it went into free fall. It just dropped like a rock. <laughs> okay, Henry Paulson supposedly got on his hands and knees and begged uh, Speaker Nancy Pelosi to bring the law back up for a vote, another vote, um, and they did. They, they modified it some, and they put in some better programs as part of it, and they made it a slightly better law, and then they passed it, and the banking system survived, um, and the world did not end. Um, there's a lot more to the story of how the top actually played out and everything, but you know the point is that the top worked. The financial system did not die. The country survived. Um, it was a very expensive and bad way to do it, but it did prevent the worst from happening. What it did not do was it did not produce economic recovery. It prevented things from getting even worse, but it left the banking system with a lot of bad assets, and it left the country with declining real estate values um, and you know, a spreading economic malaise coming from the basic underlying problems that had generated the crisis in the first place. And that problem was not the bubble. What burst the bubble was the decline in real estate, a decline that came because the economy had gone into decline and people could not make the mortgage payments that they had committed to. That was the problem. And that problem was not addressed at all by the top. Top meant that things didn't get as bad as they could have gotten.
but it did nothing to make things better, to make things right. And that's what we'll talk about next time. Until then, have a nice day. Bye-bye.